first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually really talk about what parent-child relationships are, uh, how we build them, their impact, how we find them. Uh, we'll also go in to talk about some of their implications as far as deleting and suppressing and how we work with those. And then ultimately, once we understand parent-child relationships, we really have the power to do some pretty cool things with inside the feature tree, like reorder some of our features and really affect the timeline of our model. So let's take a few minutes and look in SOLIDWORKS and see how they work. Now that we're in SOLIDWORKS, let's take a look at some of our parent-child relationships that we already have ingrained into the model. Uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at this uh, nice ratchet model that's already set up for us. And it actually already has some parent-child relationships built into it. If we wanted to figure out if a model does have any parent-child relationships, one of the ways we can do that is simply by right-clicking on a feature and saying parent-child. And SOLIDWORKS is going to list a dialog box that shows us for the feature we selected. You can see here I've got recess selected. It tells me that my parents for that feature are the head and the handle. Currently, that head has to exist in order for us to, uh, to create that. And as a child of that recess feature, we have the pocket feature as well. So we have this secondary cut underneath it. Uh, so that tells us what the parents are and what the children are for that particular feature. But that's not the only way we can do it. SOLIDWORKS also gives us a way of identifying that known as dynamic reference visualization. So you can see we have two sets of arrows, one pointing up for parent and one pointing down for child. Now these are not enabled by default, but you can turn those on. And once those are turned on, now if I simply hover over the feature, you'll notice it will actually show me arrows leading up to the parents and arrows leading down to the children. Now, in this case, once we know what our parent-child relationships are, we can start to um, work with those uh, in different ways. In this case, when we go to delete a certain feature, by default, SOLIDWORKS is going to want to delete the child features associated with that. And it does that for a particular reason. It does that so that if we do delete that feature, notice we don't have any errors in our model at this point. Now, in a similar fashion, if I chose to suppress that recess feature, very similar to deletion, you'll notice uh, whenever I, su I, I suppress a parent, SOLIDWORKS also wants to suppress the children as well again, in that same effort to avoid an error in the model. So now that we understand that parent-child relationships exist within SOLIDWORKS, let's talk a little bit about how they're formed. In this case, we form a parent-child relationship when we use the aspect of one feature to create another feature. In this case, um, with our recess cut, we actually utilized a, a face on the head to create that cut. So if I were to edit the sketch of that recess cut, you'll notice that whenever I do that, right, you can see that that sketch was created right on the top face of the actual head feature. So in this case, that head feature then becomes a parent to my recess feature. Now that we understand a little bit more about how parent-child relationships are formed within SOLIDWORKS, let's look at one of the cool things we can do when we work within those same confines. So in this case, I've got a part, and you can see that it is actually shelled out all the way through. I've got a consistent wall thickness all the way through that part. What I want to do with this is I actually want to add that shell thickness a little earlier uh, in the feature tree. And if I take my rollback bar, you can see that I can roll up to just underneath base fillet. And you can see that right now I have just a solid chunk. And really what I want to do is I want to take that wall thickness command, that shell command, and I want it to exist right underneath that base fillet. So if I want to do that, SOLIDWORKS actually lets me reorder features in the feature tree. The one um, caveat with that is that we can't reorder a child past its parent. And you'll notice in this case, it tells me that my circular boss, I can't go above it. It says I cannot reorder because it would put a child feature above its parent feature. So if we hover over wall thickness, you can see there's that arrow we talked about earlier that tells me 
that that circular boss is in fact a parent of it. So what I need to do is I need to remove that that um, from my wall thickness command. Somehow I'm referencing that. So if I come in and edit that wall thickness feature, you can see in fact I am referencing two faces on that circular boss. And if I remove those from my selection set, now if I complete that command, it still shells my part out minus the two faces. And if I hover over my feature, notice now my wall thickness um, is, is no longer a child of my circular boss, which means that I should be able to take and move that to the point that I want to in the tree. So now by moving that up, you can see that my shell command exists, right? Essentially the third thing that I did in the model, right? As far as SOLIDWORKS is concerned. Now if we move our tree back, now we have just the base shell.